Hey friends, so in this particular video, what I want to do is to talk to you how we can get an Ubuntu virtual machine up and running, pretty much so that you have the same environment at home as I am working with right here. Now I will say, you do not have to use Ubuntu if you really don't want to, it just makes things a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier, if you happen to be using the same operating system as me. So this is going to be the solution that I'm going to recommend. Now in order to get Ubuntu up and running, I'm going to use some type of virtualization software because I actually do not have a Windows machine or rather a Windows machine. I actually do not have a Linux machine running right now. I happen to be running a MacBook. Now quite simply, when I'm doing development, when I'm doing testing and demos, I don't want to work on my host machine pretty much. I don't want to risk breaking anything. And by the way, many of the most popular DevOps tools happen to be built for Linux. So it does make sense. It makes things really quite easy if I'm just working from that particular environment. So like I say, I'm going to be doing some type of virtualization. So what we need is some type of virtualization software. So you can use any solution you so wish. Perhaps you want to use maybe say VMware, which is a very common one. If you happen to be using a MacBook, you would want to install VMware Fusion. If you happen to be on Linux natively or you happen to be on Windows, you would want to have VMware Workstation. Or you can go and download another very well known and popular choice. This is Oracle's VirtualBox. Either or is going to be fine, just take your preference. So choose one of your solutions, get your virtualization software up and running, and now let's discuss what we actually want to be installing. So check this out. Now, I'm just going to search for Ubuntu desktop downloads. So the desktop means I'm going to have the full graphical environment. I'm going to be able to use things like my web browser, so on and so forth. Whereas if you want a more minimal installation that uses less resources, that's just got a basic command line interface, you can just download the server version, but I wouldn't really recommend you do that because at times we're going to be using the functionality of the actual desktop itself. So it makes sense to actually have one natively on the box. Now, one last point. What I happen to be using is a MacBook M1. Okay, this is an M1 chip. This is Apple's own silicon. Because of this, I have to download a very particular image. I'm going to have to make sure that my image is an ARM architecture. Whereas if you happen to be running Windows or an older MacBook that uses an Intel processor, you can just download the regular 64-bit installation. So in the case of the Windows downloads or the older MacBooks, you would click this link right here. And as you can see here, we have the Ubuntu desktop download and here it is here. And you would just simply click this link and then you would specify where you would want to save the image and just save and download it. Now in my case here, I want to get a very particular version. So what I'm going to also add on is the word ARM, okay? Now if I just go for Ubuntu for ARM right here in this particular option, all it's given me is the Ubuntu server for ARM at the moment. Maybe when you watch this video, things will be a little bit different, but right now all I have is the server images without the actual desktop. So what I want to do here is if I go back, all I'm going to search is for this right now, Ubuntu Jammy Jellyfish Download ARM. And I'll just click this link right here. And if I just scroll on down, what we can see here is on the right, we actually have a 64-bit ARM architecture and it's a desktop image. This is the one that I want to click. So let's click this here. And all I will do is choose save. And now as we can see here, the download begins. So once you've done that, go and open up your virtualization software. In my case, I'm using VMware. So I'll just go and add a new machine. I'll choose the image that I want to be using. And if I scroll on down here is the Jammy desktop ARM64 image that I want to use. So I'll choose continue. And then you can customize the settings for whatever you want. I'll just call this Ubuntu 2. And if you so wish, you can do things like add more memory, so on and so forth. But quite honestly, the defaults should be okay. So once that's done, just start the machine. And all I will do is try or install Ubuntu. So your environment might look a little bit different. In my case here, I'm presented with a desktop. And all I have to do in my case is just double click this link. Ultimately, this is the point we want to get to. So I'll just choose my language, which is English. Choose continue. In my case, I'm in the UK, so I'll select that. But of course, choose whatever one fits your scenario best. And all I want to do is to make sure I've got a normal installation, okay? And then choose continue. And I want to erase disk and install Ubuntu. And then choose continue. Now I'll just choose my location, which is going to be in the United Kingdom. So I will choose London as the time zone. And now I'll give it a name. So in my case here, my name will be IPv0. Just give the computer a name. If you so wish, call it server or system or my computer, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. I'll just say server. And now just choose a password. So I'll choose a fairly simple password because it is just a lab environment after all. And I'll choose require my password to log in and then choose continue. So just give it some time to copy over the files that are necessary. So the installation is now complete. I will just choose to restart. So if you happen to be experiencing the same thing that I am right now, you might think that something is wrong. We see a failure, but don't worry about it. In this case here, all you have to do is press enter. 
And then if you give it a moment to reload, it begins to boot up once again. And now, as you can see here, I actually have my login. So if I hit enter and then type in the password that you created when the account was made and then hit enter, then just choose skip, next, next, next and done. And all I'll do is go into my preferences, go to unnamed, and all I'm going to do is just change the font size to be a little bit bigger. So go in here, move this up a little bit. Now, maybe your installation was a little bit different depending on the platform that you were using, but broadly, those are the configurations that you would want to set in order to get yourself up and running. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a career in IT or just looking to brush up your IT skills, then be sure to visit cbtnuggets.com for a free trial.